G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. Time for a mad scientist video. From deep in the social black hole where time moves more slowly and bad ideas take longer to filter in, and the old ways have not yet disappeared. And here's an example of an old way that has not yet disappeared. The Zenit photo sniper, probably about 1982 vintage, made in the USSR. It's a pretty simple camera and it's completely manual. There's no batteries in it. It has a solar panel. That's a photoelectric cell which is hooked up as a light meter. It tells you how much light there is. Before photographing anything, you point the camera at it. Having previously set the film speed in this little window here by moving the inner ring to show 400 ASA, which is the film speed. Then we have a needle and we have a circular window. And as more or less light comes in the window, the little needle moves around. So the idea is we capture the needle in the window by moving the outer ring. Then having set the film speed and the amount of light into your slide rule along this surface around here, you get to read off combinations of aperture sizes on the inner ring and shutter speeds on the outer ring. In this case, a 500th of a second with f8, a 250th of a second with f11, 125th with f16, and a 60th of a second with f22. We have available settings from f22 to f4.5, on the back of the lens, that's what the lens looks like at f4.5, it's a straight through tube. Whereas at f22, the iris comes down and you only got a tiny little hole for the light to get through. So the higher the f number, the less light gets into the lens. The lower the f number, the more light gets into the lens. And this is set up so that you can have the most possible light for focusing, which is achieved by rotating knurled knob on the front end of the submachine gun stock. And then on half trigger squeeze, the iris drops down. And on full trigger squeeze, the shutter fires. So that's all you've got to remember to do. And when you do that, Having first wound the mechanism so that the shutter is open, uh, is cocked, um, it's a, a focal plane fabric following blind shutter. So what happens is when the shutter is opened, a blind opens the entire shutter. When it closes, another blind follows it. Right, and it means that the entire film receives exactly the same amount of light exposure. A lot of more modern cameras they had a vertical acting, so it opened from the top down, three leaf focal plane shutter, and that meant that the top of the bit of film got about three times more light than the bottom did, and the middle got halfway between the two. And that's good if you've got a short lens where the image from the brightly lit sky comes in through the lens and goes onto the bottom of the film, and that's the bit down there that doesn't get much exposure. The image from the center of the picture comes straight through and gets the calculated exposure, and the image from the bottom of the dark ground comes up and it gets printed on the part of the film that gets three times as much exposure as the bit down here. If you've got a little short lens and you're taking snapshots, that's great. If you've got something like this, five power telephoto with an eight degree wide field of view and even though an infinitely variable electronic focal plane shutter is technically theoretically going to be better for the masses it's no good for the sort of photography that i like to do because what comes in my lens is even light so last saturday my son took me to an air show at armadale and that is a yak three 
on final approach to land on the main runway at Armidale. Both my children had gone for a ride in a Jet Ranger helicopter and while they were in the air, that's when I assembled the photo sniper. So this is my cheat shot of a helicopter departing so that I could give the kids later on a print of the helicopter they went for a joyride in, but they weren't actually in it. Not when I photographed it with a photo sniper, because when they were sitting in the helicopter, I was using this camera, the Nokia Asha 302, to make a phone camera video. This is the Grumman Avenger owned by Paul Bennett Airshows. He gives joyrides in this for $1,295 per 20 minutes. The aircraft behind it is the Qantas Link Dash 8, taxiing over to the airport terminal. The Avenger is crossing the runway to come over to the air show. So I was able to get those three photographs between taking the first shot of this on final approach and having it come past me tail high doing a wheels on landing. This is the Yak 3 with I think a 1500 horsepower Shvetlov or something Russian radial engine. And I got all that done in the three minutes that it takes for a helicopter to fly a figure eight joyride. Helicopters always try to fly a figure eight joyride when they can because a circle or an oval the customers feel like they've been ripped off. A figure eight, three minutes, same amount of time in the air. The turns are steeper, they get turns both ways and they get slightly disoriented and they feel like they've had better value for the flight. So this is the jet range that my kids went for a fly in. That's a picture that my daughter took of the policeman asking me, is that a rocket launcher or is it just a camera? Okay, it's 2015. Once upon a time, I just used to get funny looks. Now I get funny questions. And that is the photo sniper's view of the policeman who came over to see whether that was a rocket launcher or is it just a camera. He was really impressed with the clockwork level of Russian Soviet technology. And uh, I like this picture particularly because it demonstrates what's so great about long lens photography. His face is in perfect focus. It's not in the center of the frame because, you know, I just wanted him to be sort of looking the way he is and everything else in the background is completely blurred and it draws everybody's attention to what the photographer wants them to look at. I might try and get a copy of this photograph to him because I think he might enjoy it. He didn't give me a hard time, he seemed to enjoy the interaction and I did too. So after I'd been cleared by the airport security forces, um, I sort of alternated between the video camera and then I'd suddenly pick up take a, a still shot with a 35 mil, drop it back on the shoulder strap and keep videoing. This is a thing called a Pitts 11. Now in a vertical climb, doing a loop, and here we see it's not startlingly big and close in the photograph because I was standing a long way back behind the display line so that when I was using the video cameras, I wouldn't get pixelation at the center of the sweep while panning to follow aircraft flying sometimes at 350 miles per hour. So I was set up to best advantage the video camera, thinking that the five power telephoto would be able to grab some pretty good snapshots anyway. This is one of them. But it meant that I really didn't get stunning close-ups on the still camera. However, like I said, I was set up to be able to use a video camera to cover events like this, where I've taken a photograph of the Pitts S11 at about 30 feet in a side slip powering along with smoke billowing out just going across in well in, in front of the vhs radio transmitter tower with uh i think that's a yak and i think that's a nan chang but i'm not an expert in them wound on and taken another shot perhaps a second away wound on and taken yet another shot maybe another second later or maybe I took all three shots in the space of two seconds. The shots don't actually montage. And I need my body to shield the excess light. There you go, you can see it there. So it was kind of a compromised position to get the best images for both cameras and it sort of worked out pretty well.
Then we had a Pawnee crop duster towing a modern fiberglass sailplane, maybe carbon fiber, I don't know. Now this sailplane needed to be towed up by a powered aircraft, but once it gets up, if you look really closely, just behind the wing on top of the fuselage, there's a little lump. That little lump is a turbojet. It might give one or 200 feet per minute climb, so it's not actually fit for taking off with, but it's like a 1,000 to 1 glide ratio, which burns kerosene and means that you can get home even if there's no lift from thermals available. Here above and to the left of the little boy in the blue shirt, you can see the only well, one of the only two RAAF roulettes that actually got through to Armadale because the weather was just so vile. Because I was so far back from the display line, it meant I was close to the takeoff runway. So this is the best shot I got of a CAC Wirraway taking off, also owned by Paul Bennett Air Shows. That's the Wirraway climbing out. And for all you aero modelers out there, that's a radio controlled turbojet model of an F-16. By the way, here endeth roll one. Roll two begins with a shot of the Pitts 11, followed by a bloke from Walker called David Salter flying a Harvard, painted up in Royal New Zealand Air Force colours. That is an L-39 Albatross, a Czechoslovakian jet. And that is a wood-burning steam traction engine towing a trailer. It was an automotive and air show. So that's the L39 again, and it's not actually that much bigger or better or easier to see than the model of the F16, actually. It's a Yak-52 and the Pitts S11 smoke on doing a loop. Yak and the Pitts pulling out of the loop with smoke on. Smoke on coming towards the camera, getting ready to do a roll. And there they are, rolling towards the camera. David Salter again, this time in VHUAE, Australia's oldest registered flying aeroplane, which his wife Carolyn Salter speaks about in the first video in this series. I may not have been quite close enough, but I got some really nice atmospheric evocative shots. And I've flown in a Tiger Moth and worked on fabric covered biplanes and even a triplane, so I got a few of them. And I think this one's probably the best atmospheric shot of the lot, the cirrus moth flying into the storm clouds, or against the storm clouds. And I've got to say that without the clouds, these would probably be total silhouette shots. The only reason we can see anything on the near side of the aeroplane is because the light is being diffused by the clouds. Owing to the layout of Armadale Airport, there's not really much else that the organisers could do about that. But yeah, you kind of need to have the sun over your shoulder when you're standing on a flight line at an airport display or air show. That is the CAC Wirraway in an almost vertical climb. CAC Wirraway flying past from left to right. That's the Wirraway again in a 45 degree dive. There he is there and I'm pretty sure he's done a half loop and he's rolling off the top to convert it into a um, a half Cuban eight, perhaps. It's the Wirraway in a vertical turn. Here we see the top surface of the Yak-3 because it's doing 350 miles per hour and it's doing a roll and we're looking at the top of the aeroplane from the bottom of the ground. This is the Russian Roulettes, R-O-O-L-E-T-T-E-S. -T -T -E They're flying um, Yak-52s and Nanchang-54s. Six ship aerobatic team, brilliant display. And this is what I was saving my video, my film for. This is the um, Grumman Avenger coming in for a low pass on what was a simulated strafing run led by the Wirraway, followed by the Harvard with pyrotechnic dis explosions displayed under and behind them. And yeah, I was on the still camera for the pyrotechnic display. So, you know, pop bang, it went zap. But yeah, it's a beautiful photo of the Avenger. So that's my day at the air show with the ancient camera. And in case you're wondering, Big W, they sell disposable cameras and they send their film to Glen Innes to photo create, which has the last remaining commercially operating 35 millimeter automatic color fast photo developing and printing machine in the Southern hemisphere. So it would normally cost $40 for two rolls to be developed and printed. I got it at mates rates, but 
22 pictures off the first roll of 24, 25 pictures off the second roll of 24. What do you know about that? Here in the social black hole, if you're a mad scientist, old technology is still functional and it works. Kimosabi, it works. Ciao.